How's it going YouTube? Come with you today with another video. And today, guys, the brand new is going to be where to hand trap for post Fini. We've already seen YCS Vegas, and there's been quite a few different changeups with the deck list and a lot of very, very good interactions to talk about. If you haven't already checked out my sponsors over an Imperium Duelist, Dragon Shield, Gem, Cloud, RW, Grimoire, or Chain Link, definitely go ahead and check them all out down below in the description. Without further ado, let's hop right on into where to hand trap. So the first one is going to be Pure Snake. Now the first and foremost thing to say is do not play Droll Lockbird against Pure Snake. It is not good. We can play through it. Uh, Nibiru is very solid. Nibiru is one of those cards that if you hold it for the right time, we'll talk about one of the best things that you can do with that soon. But Nibiru is just super crazy because a lot of times if you have Nib plus another hand trap, you can really force your opponent into a really weird corner where they kind of have to play into it. Uh, so this is a card that all around you can really catch people off guard and you should be main decking this card. It's very solid. Um, DD Crow on the Princess is fine. I like it more so if you're going to use it against like the OTK line if they're trying to like world see you to death, right? So you can go ahead and just like crow the Promethean. Just make sure that you go ahead and crow this beforehand before they use Princess Effect. Um, and then Bell, of course, is really crazy because you can hit Flame Birds Effect. But I really do like Bell as like a second Ash. I still like hitting Wanted in the draw phase. I think that if you play the deck enough that you know that you don't activate Wanted in the draw phase unless you really need it. So being with a belt in the draw phase is really clean. Uh, denying your opponent access to the original sin. Uh, you can always ash the wanted as well if you want to. But if you do have like ash bell, bellowing the wanted in the draw phase is really impactful. Now, a lot of people like to ash the original sin. I'm personally of the opinion that if they have bonfire, I'm probably just hitting it. Because if they're leading bonfire, it means they probably don't have ash. Uh, and I'm just going to respect that and just ash the bonfire anyway. Um, I respect this more too because if you just ash like the poplar that comes out, they still get a body on board and then they still get something in the spell and trap. So if they do have original, this is going to put you in a really weird spot. I'd rather make my opponent waste a card with like witch or what have you. Uh, so ashing bonfire to me at least is always going to be correct. I really like this hit here. Uh, and then just mourner, imperm, or valor onto a snake eye ash is always going to be the best spot. Uh, talk about Fire King Snake Eye, though. Not a whole lot changes. Drone Lockbird gets a lot better. Uh, I do like Belling the Kirin instead. I think Kirin's still really impactful. You can always still hit the Wanted poster, though, because that card's still going to be bonkers. Uh, but hitting Kirin is definitely very impactful, too, to be able to deny your opponent access to things like Arvada and the Destruction. Uh, through the lines, a lot of times you'll see your opponent pop the Arvada first, so they have it engraved so they can reborn it. So that's something just to keep in mind as well. There is something I want to talk about though, and that's going to be using Valor, Imperm, or Mourner onto a Poplar if you have Nib. So this is really impactful. I did this a lot this weekend, and it was actually really solid. Uh, if your opponent summons Poplar and then they can't get to Temple, it just makes Nib a lot better because at that point they won't get the additional body uh, or like the Flame Bridge, right? Uh, so I like this a lot. I think this really does push people into a corner uh, whenever you have these two together uh, because deny access to temple and pure is kind of insane. Uh, so I really do like this at the play that you can do. Uh, voiceless. I really like DD Crow onto Safira. If you can DD Crow like a low, that's fine. If they already normal summon like a diviner, then that's excellent. But if you were just DD crowing the low versus like a Safira, I'm kind of 50-50 on it. I think that it's almost always more impactful just to go ahead and get rid of the Safira. Uh, at least in my practice, I've been seeing this be a lot better. Um, you can always hit the low though if you want to, but I think this is just the more optimal choice. Uh, bell or Ash onto Safira or Prep. A lot of people are like, well, you should Bell Prep or you should Bell Safira. Um, I think either or is fine. I know a lot of people are more leaning toward hitting the Safira. I lean more toward hitting the Prep. Um, I like this one a lot more. I think this is fine. You deny them the Spell in the Grave, which can be really solid for like the Sayuravis summon. And you also get the, uh, protection of your opponent not being able to just like summon anything on a deck right but i still like the prep a little bit more because i feel like it gives you a lot more options than say like the Safira. but this is kind of going to be a you call um again i prefer right but some people prefer Safira. either or it works though and then valor imperm or mourner onto low really important here as well um talking about branded not a whole lot changes here gonna be valor imperm mourner onto quem uh quem is just such a huge building block in the deck to really be able to make sure that you can spam mirror jade out to the board uh ashing brand infusion and then just clearing the gimmick puppet 
not every branded list is playing the gimmick puppet, which I think is a little weird. Uh, I think that if you have a blowout card like that that you could play, that you just play it. But we have seen a lot of people just go ahead and cut this. Uh, so it really depends on what kind of build they're on, but I do recommend playing the Gimmick Puppet. I think the branded Voiceless deck is way worse than just Voiceless 2. Uh, so it's usually just going to be branded. You'll see the branded Fusion come down. You don't have to think about like the variance in that. Uh, Flu, this doesn't really change. This has been the same thing forever now. You Ash the Pot, and then you hit them with Droll, and you Valor Imperm on the Eglin to deny access to the Empen. And then Cash Tira. Again, the Droll is really solid here. Ashing the Field Spell. If they activate Field Spell, I'm Ashing it every time. Like, this deck has such a bad bricking problem. You could Ash the Osis if you want to, but a lot of people's extra decks are not set up for a Unicorn anyway. So at that point, like, you could be in a rough situation if they rip one from there and then they rip one on your turn. So if the first thing they do is just activate Race Saw, I'm probably just Ashing it immediately. Or if it's like a Pot card, I'm also just going to clear that too. Uh, and then just go ahead and negate the unicorn, which is always going to be the best one you got. Not a whole lot to cover today. Definitely a couple of really key interactions with things like Voiceless and Snake Eye that I wanted to cover. A lot of the other ones are just repeats at the moment. So I didn't really want to go too detail with a lot of the other decks that we already know what to do. Uh, I want to just be able to bring a lot of new information to you that you might not know and help you out against those really insane fire decks. Uh, so if you haven't checked out the Discord, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, or my Medify page, definitely go ahead and do so all down below in the description. I hope everyone has a wonderful day. I'll catch you on the next video. Thank you.